So it, it's pretty deep. He goes pretty deep. He does talk about wanting to commit suicide um, after he finished uh, basketball. He injured his knee and was done, right? And he was yeah. div- Division One, right? And Brandon Curry's in there. Like, this is good. I think okay. pretty good. And, they got uh, good lineup. Yeah, it was the, everyone was in there, and okay. um, uh, he talks about being at his lowest point. Where at one point, um, once he pretty much got kicked off the team, basketball team, he went in at two in the morning. He walked in some street and uh, laid in the middle of the road and just said, "This, I hope a car drives over me. I hope I'm done. I can't. I don't want to do this." Damn. Yeah. So you know, that's people. He that was the first time he's, I think he's ever shared that story. Yeah. Um, there's also some exclusive photos in there that he's never shown before where he shows the first photo he took when he started his body in the career and it's just like a fucking genetic freak like no wonder he became seven time Mr. Olympia because the photo he took was just like he already looked like a genetic freak I think Tonio's yeah I, yeah I think Tonio this is four weeks out for Nick I think Tonio's will look more aesthetically pleasing in that back shot and yeah, it'll be more turtle shell poppy but Nick's gonna have, four, you have a lot of 30 pounds of muscle on him maybe more than that up and the same height right yeah, and conditioning, so it's going to be hard to beat. You know, I was kind of like, can maybe, maybe Tonio can beat him, maybe, but nah, you know, Nick is not when you start looking at Nick, the closer he's getting. Yeah. He's already stage ready. Yeah. It's just, he could pull water and fill out and go there and do damage right now, year round and hard. So yeah. his diet is entirely too strict year round, so that can cause a lot of strain and stress on his heart as well. Yeah. That can play a part because he's just entirely too lean and hard year round. And I don't think anyone should do it like no. that. It's you hard know? to stay that fucking mean and the juiced up. And like he, he's always on. He never looks off, right? Yeah, he's always on. You're going to be a professional athlete in the pro league. If you're a tennis player and you're a professional athlete, you're doing the circuit. You're doing the tour. You're not doing right. one tennis match a year. But yeah, I'm right. going to do one, one tennis match and that's good enough for me. Yeah. Why? Everybody yeah. act like they missed their Olympia. Fuck. Yeah. So yeah. this Tyler Mannion or Jay Mannion, whoever, uh, uh, Dan Solomon, all these guys, you see this, t- like start thinking about how do we make this sport more professional in the sense of how we compare to other sports. I'm here to win. I want to be to the point to where that when I show up, they'd be like, damn, why is he here again? Yeah. Because I'm coming to win. I want your check. All right, guys. Well, welcome to the first Matt and Max show, episode number one. We will be coming to you every Monday. This is airing on Sunday or recording on Sunday. Airs on Monday. Uh, Mac Truck, thank you for coming on and doing this with me. Uh, we're going to be going on your channel as well, you know, uh, and uh, we're bringing it to you uncensored, in your face. We don't give a shit what you think or what you say in the comments. We're giving to you it real talk. And that's just how it's going to be, right? Um, exactly. We do get a lot. We do get a lot of clap back in the comments sometimes, and we talk, give our opinions, and that's okay. That's okay. You don't like it? Don't watch, I guess, because you, you you guys come up in the comments, and then you you complain, but then you end up you're you're watching the video. So I don't I don't I don't get it. Why watch? If you don't like it, you don't like the title, you don't like what it is. Don't watch the video. So right. So it's, we got like. Hey, listen. It's like everybody like to go to the um to the car races only to watch the car crash. Yeah. Exactly. And when a car crash happened, they'd be like, "It was that guy's fault over there." Like, come on now, you know you enjoy it. You exactly. enjoy this show, so exactly. knock it off. It's okay. Just just enjoy it. It's something different. It's uncensored. Um, it's not just your everyday kind of. You know, I do the updates. I do the physique reviews. I have exclusive interviews here. Um, and now me and Mac. And just have some fun on the weekend here. Catch up what happened during the week. Report it to you guys. Give her opinion on it. And give you some behind the scenes stuff as well. That you're not going to get on other channels. So that's why I'm excited about this, this collaboration. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Yeah. It's uh, well overdue. Well overdue. So that's what's happening with the Matt Mac show. Uh, we got a big announcement. You know, you've kind of already announced it online. But... You are officially doing the 2024 Vancouver Pro Show in my neighborhood. So oh, yeah. we're definitely going to link up. And, uh, you know, it's going to be crazy when you're here. We're going to do a lot of work together. We're going to do interviews. We're going to be at West Coast Iron. Uh, you'll be training there as well. So uh, that's where all the pros go when they come to compete at the show. So we're going to have a good time. And um, I'm excited for it, man. So tell me tell me about, uh, you know, your mindset going into this prep. 
and then we're going to take a look at the video you just posted as well uh, of how you're looking and we're going to assess your physique and we'll, we'll go from there okay well um actually with i wasn't even thinking about doing this um show um it actually got thrown on me you know by matt <laughs> you know like uh, when i was telling you that i don't think i'm gonna be ready for the cow I'm like, I'm not going to have enough time because I'm not even starting my PEDs like I'm supposed to yet and everything. And then I say, um, the Toronto Pro, he was like, dang, why you want to go that far and everything? And once you um, showed me all of the uh, pros and the cons with it and everything, I said, it makes um, uh, absolute sense to actually do it this way because we was 12 weeks out when we first pulled the trigger to be getting of the week and everything. Yeah. So, um with this process, I'm just making sure that I keep you involved with what's going on and everything, because, you know, like I pretty much got to watch and eyeball everything myself. And with having you there, mm -hmm. I know you're non biased and I know uh, you give it to me straight and everything. So this is like pretty much not just um, the Matt and Mac show is actually um, on the road to the um, Van Pro at the same time. Yeah. So, my yeah. mindset is like laser focus right now. I'm laser focus. I'm all in when it comes to doing this uh, competition because I took way too many years off of being on the stage. Yeah. So I need to, I need to remind these people who I was when I was a top level national bodybuilder. Now that I'm a pro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, agreed. And um, you know, let the people know your stats. Right. Because a lot of people don't realize the amount of muscle you're you're holding. And you've you alluded to this to me. You're like, Matt, I don't look as big in my photos and the videos. And you see me in person, people are like shocked to see how big right. I am. Right. Yeah. I'm oh, I'm sitting at like five, eleven and a half. People think I'm six feet, I'm not six feet. So I'm pretty tall for a bodybuilder. Yeah. Uh two sixty-three right now. Um uh, shit. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm lean year mm. round. Yeah. Like I don't get fat. Uh, metabolism is extremely fast. Yeah. And the older I'm getting, I'm noticing that it's like not slowing down, which is a good thing. Yeah. So I'm just taking advantage of it because my legs are still activating. My legs mm -hmm. are still growing. So it's yeah. not like I'm just top heavy, unbalanced on proportion. So I'm yeah. just going to enhance everything. Um, as the closer, the closer the show get and, um, but yeah, like most people just think that I'm like five eight, five six, two hundred and fifteen pounds. No, I'm pretty no. big, dude. big dude. Big dude. Big big dude. And um, uh, we're gonna look at the video you just posted today. So it's kind of a bit of exclusive here for people who haven't seen it yet. Um, and uh, Mac looks good. Okay, like I'm gonna be honest and and, and be blunt, and I'm gonna we're gonna go over his posing because I already told me he needs to work on the posing. But tell people a little bit about your protocol and like how you're starting this prep off. Um, you know your you know your, your PEDs if you want to talk about that with full. This is uncensored. We don't fucking give a shit. Right. Like we'll tell it like it is. You come along on, on the journey, and and then what your your calories are at right now and how you have to eat so much food and the type of food you're eating. Yeah. Okay. Let's start off with the PEDs. So actually, now we at the approaching the eleven week mark. Um, I'm about to actually start implementing all my PED. So, so far for the month, I've only been on DECA and TRAN. And that's a weird combination. Yeah. Because there's no testosterone up in there. Yeah. Which I don't, like my natural testosterone level, when I crash, it drops at 313, 320, around that. So it's still high normal. Yeah. So I'm not dependent on the testosterone right now. So I'm going to start off 11 week out. I'm going to start off with uh, 750 milligrams of test ananthate. Mm -hmm. Um, what is it? Test ananthate. Cause damn, I don't, I have it on my phone. Yeah. Actually, I um, I sent, could you pull it up? I sent I, you. Yeah, I have my phone. Yeah. As the camera. So, uh, I can't, uh, it's, you text it to me, I think. So. Yeah. I wind up texting it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're doing test E you're doing, I think you have EQ um, in there in the beginning. Yeah. So. It's um 750 test E. It's 600 um it's 600 milligrams of Tran E. Yeah. But I'm gonna switch that out to um Tran A. Just yes. start running my fast now. And with the Tran A, I'm gonna run at, at 400 milligrams of Tran A. 
I pulled the EQ out and I'm running it with Master Roam yeah. um, P. I'm going to run that at 400 milligrams of Master P. I'm going to run um, Anadrol, 50 milligrams of Anadrol a day. I'm doing four IUs of GH a day, um, AM. It doesn't okay. matter if, you know, empty, full stomach, doesn't matter. Yeah. Growth hormone going to release when once I put it into the body. I'm running... Um, uh, one gram of a Remedex every other day. Yep. I'm gonna also run um 50 MCGs of clenbuterol. Okay. Um, two days on, two days off, two days on, two days off. Yeah. I I find it works better for me that way. Okay. Instead of just doing a full week, two weeks on, um, I'm gonna also be running insulin, long acting Humalog, twenty gram, uh, twenty units mm -hmm. of Humalog, and I'm gonna be running. 20 units of Lantus. So I'm running long and short um, um, insulin. Mm -hmm. As far as the break on how I'm going to do it, I'm not going to really share that part because mm -hmm. I don't want nobody to try it no. and jack themselves up. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. 20, so that's a total of 50, I mean, 40 units of insulin per day. Okay. Um, um, what else I'm running? Well, there's, there's a, a secret weapon that we have and we're not going to let anyone know that oh, I told you no. about. We were yeah. working on getting it. Still yeah. got on the hunt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting on some guy from Russia to hit back. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so we're, that's that's maybe we'll, after the show we'll talk we'll talk about it. But yeah. I'm not gonna let no one know that that's that's the secret weapon. You get on that stuff, change the Man, game. So it's gonna be lights out. Yeah. So lights out. So that's PDs, and then food wise, tell people about your metabolism. Tell them about what you have to eat just to maintain your weight and all that stuff. Yeah, so food wise, I tried bumping up the be um the beginning of last Monday. I bumped up my meals from four to five, start choking in my sleep. Then I bumped it to six. Then I actually choked until I threw up in my sleep. So I have to move it back down to four. So I can only do four meals. Wow. And my four meals is consists of uh, my protein, total pro protein. Per day is always at like is between two hundred to two two fifty. Okay. Total, and my carbs are anywhere between um five to eight hundred. Okay. Uh, grams of carbs per day. My fats, I just let my fats and my sodium just stay high, like because I'm not sodium sensitive. No. And the fats don't give me any issues, so I yeah. need those high. So I eat clean meals pretty much. I like to do a lot of um basmati rice, white rice. Um, um, skinless chicken breasts. Mm -hmm. So I do chicken breasts, rice, um, red kidney beans. Then I'll do another meal. It'll be ground turkey, rice, uh, with a little bit of potatoes in it. Mm -hmm. Um, in my rice, I like to do a cup and a half of rice, cooked rice. I don't okay. um, go, I don't go past, I don't go to the two cups anymore, uh, of the rice. And then after that, then it's all shit food like it might yeah. be um pretty much um pop tarts um um a liquid meal of protein powder my uh eaa's creatine uh two packs of oatmeal inside of it um then i do like um um donuts mm. stuff like that that could give me the high dense calories you know the the greasy calories for some reason helps me lean out and stay full. And yeah. So a total of my calories per day is always in between 4,000 to 6,000. But now that I'm prepping, I can't go under 5,500 to 8,000 yeah. yeah. um, grams of calories per day. So my calorie intake got to be, they got to be, but it can't go under, um, it really can't go under 6,000 okay. or I'm not going to be able to grow. I'm just going to maintain. And are you doing any cardio or, or just can't touch that? Well, I was um, doing cardio um, every other day. I would do, I would walk like 10 minutes only on a treadmill at yeah. a 2.7. Um, walk for 10 minutes because when I do too much cardio, it starts to eat at the actual muscle. Yeah. You know, so... What I found myself doing all this week is, and I've tried to do something different. I said, okay, I'm because I train seven days a week. 
Okay. And I'm doing my posing after training. So yeah. as intense as posing is, it's actually helping me burn more calories at the same time. So I think that would help replace the cardio because okay. I was looking at the video from yesterday to today uh, real closely. And it's I'm getting a little more dense in okay. the back area. Uh, my glutes, you can start seeing a little bit of um, the uh, striations. Yeah, we're going to take a walking, look at it. You can yeah. actually see it while I'm actually walking. So yeah. I'm like, I think the posing, I can replace so much of the cardio with the posing. Yeah. And then maybe the last two weeks, the last 10 days, just do my cardio every single day, like um, 10 minutes every day. Mm -hmm. It's just tighten everything up to deplete because you can always um, – I can always feel back out with the insulin because I like yeah. know how to use the insulin really well. Okay. Okay. So yeah, people who, who don't know that Mac has a very fast metabolism, so he doesn't need to do that much cardio and he, he can just hold this size and we're just going to coast into the show. And if we want to, you know, tighten things up, maybe we'll add in a little bit of cardio and uh and whatnot to see how he responds and bring him down a little tighter. And then we can feel him back up, have some high days and have some low days, um because uh this i'm excited so let's take a look at the video okay we got okay. Go your your protocol there and your diet I'll share this i'm gonna pick you apart here do you see it <laughs> all right all right so i i told mac i said mac you gotta stand right in front of the camera and it, he looks like a different bodybuilder now so uh let's go, yeah let's go through this okay so right away 11 weeks out, right? So you're, you're lean for, for 11 weeks out. So I can just probably just pause it. So yeah, there we go. So with this pose, you're, you're flaring the legs a little bit, which is good. You're not standing okay. the straight up and down. Um, so that's good. Um, with the midsection, I know it's probably after the gym. So you get, you're full of water, yeah, you're full of food. And it's, I know yeah. how it is because I used to do that. And it was like, it's hard to do it. So that's why right. I would I would say, unfortunately, you're not at the gym first thing in the morning was to do these type of videos first thing in the morning. Uh, that's when everything's tight, everything's out of your stomach, and you can just see what you really, really look like in your conditioning. But overall, this is a good pose for you. You're fairly balanced in this pose. Um, only thing I would say working on, we need to bring a little bit of the lat flare. Right. A little bit, but not much. Uh, arms are, are a good proportion to the lower body. So, okay, good front double bicep. Okay. We're just gonna get that stomach in tighter though. Don't, that's you know, yeah. Like, um, it's good you say that because I said I'm gonna start practicing trying to hold it in as much as possible yes. when my stomach is full with the water and yeah. the pre workouts and the food before it ends. Because if I can start holding it in more while I'm full, it'll be a piece of cake when yes. it's empty. When it's empty, yeah. yeah. And um, you know, I you don't have to do the vacuum. You know, that's something that's people. Yeah, I don't even start. know how to do it to save it's, my life. I've been practicing hard. for a whole year. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. You got to think about how to do it, but it's like, it's weird. It's a weird feeling too. And it kind of hurts when you try and do it. But, yeah. Uh, front, front lat spread is good. Um, like I said, if, if the there would be a little bit more flare on the lats, that would help okay. there. But you're hitting it. Your, your hands are in the right area on your hips. They're not too high up. Uh, so that's good. You got that down, posing the legs properly here. Um, so good, good pose. Can you find it a little bit? I'm not, maybe don't push your arms too forward, right? Bring them back a little right. bit more okay. in line with, with your, your hips and okay. just try and keep as squared up as possible, but good shot. Again, we're just running, we're just running Deca and trend right now. No test yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. Think about this but, guy. Oh, oh, he's running right. side chest hitting this good, but you're, you're like, I didn't said, arm up higher. Remember Arnold was showing that guy in pumping iron how to pose and they yeah, got bring it. And Arnold's like, why are you doing this? Open up, right? So you're 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 doing this. You're you're going uh, your neck is coming down. So you need to yeah. open your chest up, stick it up more, mm -hmm. and then twist a little bit. So this can you see my mouth get there? wider. This part you want to yeah. twist so this is showing more. Right. And, and this is twisted more back here. So you're twisting a little bit more. Yeah. Better. Yes. Yes. Yeah. To get the to show that full clavicle area and okay. more of the, of the chest area too. So you can see the cuts in the side of the chest. You can't see it because you're just straight on. But you're right. thick. You're thick. You got big arms on the side here. You know, we're 11 weeks out. We're going to 
you're very lean for 11 weeks out. Let's just say that. I'm gonna we're gonna look at that uh, Stanimal. Stanimal's doing the Band Pro too, so we're gonna see how does Stanimal look versus you know Mac Truck who hasn't competed in two years. Okay, like think about that for a second. So good side chest though. You're hitting this good. What we gotta work on too is the transition in between the poses. Right. Right tricep. This again, I know it's a bunch of food and water and shit in your stomach right now. So you're eating a ton of calories. So it's hard to, to hold that in, but that's going to be something that I really want you to focus on is that midsection, right? Right. Okay. Uh, other than that, again, twist again, just like the side chest, twist a little bit more so you can a little more, it. more yeah. than that. Yeah. Okay. More than that. And then you should be good to go for that okay. pose. All right. Back double bicep. You can already see a little bit of the cuts in the glutes coming in already. This is crazy. You're not really doing any cardio. Back though, bicep. This is where you want to lean back more. Right. Right. Um, instead of just kind of being forward, you're a little bit hunched forward. Yeah, a little I bit. was um, I was like, I because by the camera just being straight, yep. straight on with me, I didn't want to lean too much. And then that shadow shadows, yeah. 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 That I was leery about that too. Yeah. Yeah. So but, I'm gonna make sure everything you saying, yeah, oh, uh, this coming week. You gotta uh, see improvements. See the improvements, and and just leaning yeah. back a little bit more because the judges are down, right? Down for me, they're not right on eye level, so you want to show them that thickness. It's a good back double bicep, right? Uh, you're hitting the pose with your legs right, at the, the hamstring, putting one leg back, so that's good. I know those glutes are going to be there; they're already starting to be show through. Lat spread again, you just keeping lean your, back. yeah, lean back because you can kind of see you're holding it up, but that's just for the camera. Yeah. I would start leaning back on that one, but good, good width. You just need me to add a little bit more thickness to have more 3D pop, but mm -hmm. it's a good, it's a good, it's a good look. It's a good start for 11 weeks out. You're going to grow. I know you're going to grow into the show. You're going to get more denser into the show. Right. So I'm liking what I'm seeing here so far at 11 weeks out and you're barely running anything. You're just going to get more and more juiced up as you go. <laughs> so it's gonna get crazy here. So I'm excited for it, man. I'm excited for it. Let me stop this. There we go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Exclusive video here. And I'm I'm happy for you. I'm happy to see you getting back on the stage. And now you're coming to Vancouver. Yeah. I'm gonna work on everything that you just said. So yeah. by next Sunday, when I send you um the video yeah. and everything, I'm not gonna upload it to instagram until after we air stuff yeah. whatnot then yeah. um matter of fact i want i'll wait because we might use that in like the trailer for the show yeah. on instagram and yeah. and then um you're gonna see the you're gonna see the adjustments mark my okay. word you're gonna see the adjustments <laughs> awesome awesome all right um i had i had lee priest on the show on uh i think it was thursday Thirty Sunday, so okay. I'm gonna check it out. And uh, so I'm excited for that that episode to come out. Uh, we talked a lot, a lot of different topics. We talked about the racism thing with Rich Piana. We talked about um, ju judging in 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 the IPB Pro League and um, how many the competitors not doing that many shows. And uh, I want to talk about that a little bit about should the Pro League standardize it, and so that if you get your Pro card, it's mandatory that you have to do two or three shows a year. If you're going to be a professional athlete in the pro league, if you're a tennis player and you're a professional athlete, you're doing the circuit. You're doing the tour. You're not doing right. one tennis match a year. But I'm right. just going to do one. I'm going to do one, one tennis match. And that's good enough for me. Yeah. Why? Everybody yeah. act like they missed their the Olympia. Fuck? Yeah. So yeah. this Tyler Mannion or, or Jay Mannion, whoever, uh, uh, Dan Solomon, all these guys, if you see this, to, like start thinking about how do we make this sport more professional in the sense of how we compare to other sports and how they have right. a circuit, how they have these tennis players, these whatever they're doing a bunch of different shows throughout the year. You create a circuit for everyone to go through and that's a mandatory two or three shows so that you're not having these shows that only have two or three, you know, top guys in the show. And then there's a, kind of weaker lineups to be way more competitive you have way more guys doing the shows. You would have to probably adjust how people qualify for the Olympia because if you're going to have these athletes, these pro athletes doing two or three shows a year, and you're going to have a lot of the same guys doing 
two or three shows in a year, right? Because there's mandatory right. now. So a lot of them, they're going to keep winning the same show. So you got to be like, okay, that's not fair. We have to get a point system back here or something. Uh, or that first and second in each show qualify or something like that, right? right. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you think you just, just you know pick a random show once a year and then I'm taking off, I want to get bigger type of thing. And that seems to be the trend now versus yeah. like they used to do back in the day, Milos and uh, Chris Cormier, et cetera. They did... Four, yeah, 10 right shows on. a fucking year yeah it was crazy yeah it's um it's like kind of a tough one because if you don't compete you don't have your um your IFBB card registered yep. you're not an active um pro bodybuilder so it's kind of like a, a catch 22 yeah now do i feel that once you turn pro like i feel like once you turn pro you already know that you're ready to step on a stage yep. all of this taking so much time to develop and get better you should have never did the nationals to turn pro, you know, because yeah. like in reality, I think it would be better for the business if we all was doing the minimum three shows a year, mm -hmm. because it would make more people's more aware to the sport again. It would yeah. be more fun again, because I remember being a child watching it on regular TV. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that's when bodybuilding was being looked at as greek gods mm -hmm. and now it's like everyone could be um come a pro just it's, easily yeah now i'm not saying you don't have to put in a lot of work but yeah. everyone could turn pro easily and not do anything because i can remember times doing the usa's getting my butt kicked and the guys that actually win didn't go on and do anything with their career yeah you know, like yeah. Cody Montgomery, when he was he was the uh, youngest yeah. player. I had yeah. high hopes for Cody. Yeah. Uh, when he did the USA's, I was the only one talking to this kid. Mm -hmm. Everyone else was treating him with a distance and talk. Everybody was talking amongst themselves. Nobody wanted to really show him any compassion. And I knew he was a kid amongst men. Yeah. So I um I was pretty much you know um conversating with him and trying to you know, get the edge off. I already knew that this kid had all the tools to go out there and dominate the show, which he did. And he yeah. won. And he got um, an invite for the Arnold his first year, which yeah. blew my mind out. But after that, I think he had a kid and got married and he just didn't do anything else. And life takes its course. But at the same time, I feel like once you commit to doing this type of stuff with mm -hmm. putting these type of chemicals and all this food into your body, yeah. you should want to display your body, regardless if you're going to be the top um, professional bodybuilder, because no one can ever take away from you being a pro bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody have different titles, but at the end of the day, they know more of a pro than I am. You know, yeah. and that's why it's exactly active. You know, yeah. you got to be active until you can't do it anymore. Exactly. Like it devalues the pro card because you have all these people in these national shows that are um, placing, you know, first you get your you place first, you get your pro card, you place second, you get your pro card. Some shows, I think if you place third, you get your pro card. I'm like, that, that's why we have so Weird many pros. Stuff. It's and then it's just like okay, I got my pro card. Okay, I'm just I'm just gonna be a trainer now and show that I'm a pro and get clients, and then that's I'm done. That's what to use it as yeah. a, a tactic to get people uh, as for clients. And it's just like it's not it's not a big deal anymore to even have a be have a pro on your on the for, at beginning of your name now because it's just anyone can get a fucking pro card now. It's just like it's yeah it's not easy. Like okay. you could go on Instagram and you can literally see IFBB on everyone in fitness page and i don't know if they're lying or telling the truth yeah because there's so many cards being um dished out with not enough athletes actually competing afterwards you see yeah. me i went on a three-year hiatus because i had a hard um uh emotional mentally um yeah. crash you mm -hmm. know and once i got my feet back up under me i'm back driven you know Regardless of my age, yeah. my body don't show any signs of my age. So yeah. I'm like, I'll be a fool to not want to get out there with them younger dudes yeah. and get them a run for their money. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I can lose every freaking show or just place every show and don't don't win any show. But with my age, yeah, 
that's a um uh, that's a blessing. You yeah. know, like let's get it. I'm 45 years old. Yeah. No, just do it. I mean, that's the thing. And, and people need to know why why are you you doing, you know, stepping back up on this pro stage and doing it? What's the like a, more of your mindset behind that? We didn't really talk about that. Like, are do you have a goal in mind or you want to get to with this? Or you just want to be like, I want to just try and get top five in some of these pro shows? Like, what's your kind of your mindset with that? My mindset, every show I jump in, I want to win. Yeah. Now, wherever I place is where I'm going to place, but I'm entering because my first, that cow, that was the introduction to get my feet wet. Mm -hmm. It's over with now. If yeah. I want to get my feet wet, I'll jump in the shower. Yeah. Moving forward is to win. I'm yeah. going there to win. I want to be to the point to where that when I show up, they'd be like, damn, why is he here again? Yeah, because I'm coming to win. I want your check. Yes. I want your place. Yeah, that's what I want. I know it's a lot of dudes a whole lot bigger than me, a whole lot more in condition, but that don't mean anything. It doesn't because I I know I bring a shape that's yeah. that's that's like ancient, you know. Because once I come down there, the people will realize like, okay, they're going to compare my shape no different from the Quintons the. The uh Samson's, the um the uh uh um Andrew Jacks, because I'm I have well, like Milo say half hashtag bodybuilding. All I gotta do is just continue filling out why my body is willing to do it. And my goal yeah. is to continue fighting this battle as long as I can because I was brought up in this. I was raised up in this sport, you know, I was made for this sport. Um, I sent you a picture. I was six years old, full blown six pack. So it's like yeah. I was made for yeah. this. It's, you know, it's just I took for granted my genetics and will only give 60, 70 percent. Even when I turned pro, I still was probably at like 75 percent one the show or whatever. But it's like I have to have that mindset of I'm going to go win. So. Let's take a look at Stanimal, who did very well at the Van Pro. I think he got second at the Van Pro. Stan show. did good last year. He yeah. did three shows and placed top three, if I'm not mistaken, all three shows. He did really well. Right. So, and um, I, I got to ask what he weighs. I'll, list, I'm, I'll DM him and say, what do you weigh right now? I'm interested to see, is he 260 or is he 270 right now? He around my weight. Yeah. He got to be around my weight. So. Take a look at this. We just saw Mack Truck. Again, Mack Truck, two-year hiatus versus Stan. He's been full gills to the balls to the wall. So he's got a little bit on Mack Truck for sure. But yeah. can I pause it? Yeah, I can. So <laughs> like considering Mac, that fact that you've been off pretty much, mm -hmm. your side chest looks similar to to Stanimals, but obviously he's got a little bit more hardness. He's got a little bit bigger uh, side quad. Um, you know, he's full in the pecs, arms too, but not does not a much, it's not a huge gap between the two of you. Think about that for a second. Now let's see when yeah. he turns around. Okay, his glutes are leaner, but again, he's been full throttle here. You haven't been. Your back actually has a little bit more dense, dense pop to it. He's leaner right now than you, but yeah, um, you're gonna catch up. We got to get you this hard. We have to get you here. So we're gonna do. What we oh gonna yeah, do. I'm about to add those goodies this yes. week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got to get. I'm about hard. to add the goodies into play. But it's not by a lot though. It's not a lot of. No, nah, Stan look, like he's good. Like he's very good. He, like good I lots, knew, I, I've been on Stan for about. 12, 13 years, yeah, and awesome he was um, doing physique when I first met him. So he was always small. So for me yeah. to see Stan going past 240 pounds of lean yeah. muscle is uh, is a great accomplishment, you yeah. know, because I was keeping track of Stan through uh, Sean Roden because they wind up becoming roommates once Sean yeah. and his wife went through, was going through separation. Yeah. Stan um, moved, they all, they both moved in together and I was yeah. keeping track of it. And when Stanimal hit that 240 pounds for the first time, yeah. 
uh, Sean was pumped. I was pumped for him too. And at that time, I was probably like two hundred and like three pounds, mm -hmm. one ninety five or something, because I wasn't doing anything. And I was just like, wow. And um, it's amazing to see him transformate into a bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah. You know, He's, he puts in the work, man. And you can see how he's sitting the side side tricep here. Uh, he's a little yeah. bit more twisted, right? And yeah. so that's what I want you to do. So just twist it a little bit more. Hit yeah, he do one foot back. Yeah, it's better than traditional. And then he is, he's looking very vascular, full, right? So, again, you're on DECA and trend. That's it. So this is remember that. Yeah. You got to get in all the other SUPs and then it's going to start changing. I know, I know you're going to start bringing in that vascularity and, and, um, and fullness, a little bit more fullness, but. Again, Stan was a top two athlete last year. And so Absolutely. you're not far from that, in my opinion. You're not far from this, right? He's got a little yeah, bit more, more size and stuff, but that's not by a lot. And his midsection's a little bloated here too when he hits his, right? So yeah. he's same thing. He's probably finished workout here and he's just hitting the shots just like you are. So he's going right. through the same thing, right? It's not like it's a super small stomach here. It's got some thickness in there because he's full. But right. when he dials it in, he's good. it'll be different. So, yeah, I see a lot of similarities between you and Stan's physique. And he's doing yeah. the Van Pro. So, yes, yeah, Stan will bring those quads out more. He's yeah. going to have that look like the Andrew Jacks, the Samson, you know, like the whole, yeah. like Milo say, hashtag bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he bring the quads out more because he already have a really good waist. It's not wide. Mm -hmm. out of proportion um and he's like me got to bring them lats out some more yeah in that front but overall his shape he's shaped like a bodybuilder instead of a refrigerator so yeah 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 he, he he's definitely one on my radar yes to put that out there that's my carrot on the stick yeah yeah that's who we're gonna, we're gonna be chasing is is stan because he did so well last year at the bad yeah. pro and uh you know we're gonna and look at and just kind of watch how he's posing too. That's how I kind of want you to to be hitting some of these. Oh shots. yeah, I just gotta get back. I just gotta get it. You're getting in the groove. groove. Exactly. Yeah, I gotta get back in the groove. Yeah, and I'll be pushing you. I'll be pushing you. So you have someone oh, yeah. pushing you, pushing you. Like, so it's good to have someone like that in your corner to keep pushing you, man. So yeah, uh, I'm excited. So that's what I got next on my list there. Oh, okay. So I got Instagram open. So I want to talk about uh, Joy. You, uh, you. Uh, alluded me to this one he uh who did the thing on him johnny bravo yeah yeah johnny bravo did a did a segment on him and you know like what do you think you know like i don't know why he's having heart surgery what is he in his late 30s maybe early 40s yeah he's, he's in his 30s he's younger okay. than me yeah you so know. I, I, oh. I, do you think it's a it's a hereditary like heart thing yet or is it like do you think it's because maybe it's because of the, the drugs or like what is your your thoughts on that well anytime something pertains heart cancer anything with the organs yeah that's uh hereditary and mm. you use an enhancements and you don't know that you have those mm. yeah traits you just enhance it and speed it up yeah so I think he already had someone in his family, either his granddad, uh, um, somebody have heart condition issues, and yeah. it passed down to him and him not doing his due diligence, probably not mm -hmm. to see what they have, um, what they're highly prone of and all of this, because once you start putting trend and growth yeah. hormone into the mix, it will enhance whatever it is that you have so but just um the drug weakened in the heart by itself he don't look like a drug abuser no you know he's he's actually too lean year round and hard so yeah his diet is entirely too strict year round so that can cause a lot of strain and stress on his heart as well that yeah can play a part because he's just entirely too lean and hard year round and i don't think anyone should do it like no. that it's you hard know, to stay that fucking mean and the juiced up. And like he, he's always on. He never looks off, right? Yeah, he's always on. Yeah. And if he was to actually try to take bodybuilding serious like he once did, he could have probably been and been something so and retired from it. Yeah, the hospital get like, okay, what is this? 
Yeah. One year ago, I was rushed to the emergency room for heart surgery to save my life since I have felt this sense of impending doom and restless anxiety over a single day. Tragedy today. The cardiologist, he's gave me the best news. All the test heart function is better than ever. Is this yeah. like deja vu? What is this? <laughs> I don't know. What? So why is he but, having all these heart issues? You know, it's That's like... Weird. The same picture. It's like the same thing, man. This is a year ago. 16. It's like, is this for attention or is this real? Because do, do not play around with that if it's not for real because, you know, life is already short as it is. And we play oh. with a heart because we lose too many athletes in this sport behind heart issues. Yeah. He says no. umbilical umbilical hernia. Fixed. Oh, okay. okay, so okay. surgery this week for to fix an umbilical hernia. Okay. Okay, so he had a hernia. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, man, he's spending a lot of time in the in hospital. The hospital. But he always looks like this. Like, it's hard yeah, to look like. All the time. <laughs> God, fuck. All the time. Yeah. He looks good. He just never did the show or competed, I don't think. But yeah, well, it's like. Yeah. I, like um in Johnny video, he said that, you know, the steroids and all of this is causing, he alluded to saying like it's causing people to have heart attacks and dying young and everything. And then he go off and promote the TRT, which is a, still a steroid. Yes. <laughs> like, you should have left that out of there. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but the thing is, this is it right here. Yeah. The steroid is not killing no one no the person that's abusing the steroids or any enhancements is what's killing itself like this whole thing of they're dying young and all of this like people's die young without steroids in their body yeah you, you, you this, know? Think, think about the amount of people that use steroids if that were the case you would have Thousands of people dropping dead or just dying from steroids all the time. That's not yeah, the case. Right. It's very rare, okay, that you ever right. hear. So this guy died from steroid use. No, this guy died from a heart attack, probably yeah. hereditary, and then you know maybe the steroids contributed to a little bit of it, but it's not. It's very rare, right? So yeah. um, you got people. This died. is why he having heart issues because his his body fat is too low year so round. That's a heart yeah. attack walking. Yeah, man, that's tough. And what 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 is he taking? What what fat burners? What is he doing to maintain that leanness all the fucking year round? So that's right. Joey's Shoot raw T three oh, shrimp alone. Yeah, you only want to do that for like twelve weeks and then get the fuck off that shit and that's, get that's, off that's of it yeah. like ASAP. <laughs> yeah. So that's Joey Swole. Uh, hopefully, speedy recovery to Joe. He's a great guy. He he's, he does good good content on the people doing shit in the gym and. Right, all people out. So uh, good, good on him for that. Um, I did talk to Mister Fuad on the okay. phone. We I talked to you about that. Um, we had a thirty minute phone call, heated phone call with Fuad, and um, at first he he sent me a text, said, "Hey, this is Fuad, blah blah blah." You know about my video that I I did with the interview I had with Mish, a former close friend of Fuad's, and um. He was not happy that I aired that video. And I said, I understand that. You know, you're coming here. You're trying to, you know, clean it up the mess that uh, your wife's made with Mish by sending him a message and threatening him in that message. I do have the, the screenshots for that. I'm just not going to, I kind of ended that and it's going to leave it where it is for now. Um, there's no point in kind of moving forward with that. I do have the, the proof of it. Mish was telling the truth. Uh, Fua did verify and, and confirm with me, yeah, Mish was his friend, you know, and they did train together, did they were friends, so that was all true with what Mish was saying. Now, all the allegations Mish said, I don't know, I don't know if uh, his stories are all true about what Fua did behind people's backs and stuff, but what I do know is true is that his wife did reach out to Mish and said that shit to him. So, at the end of the day, that's what the 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 basis behind that that interview was about because that's what triggered Mish to make it. It was just based on uh, Fuad's wife reaching out to him. So, and in that conversation, as I told you, Mac, uh, 
lots of vindication and uh, validation, I guess, in, in my thought process on who Fuad is and that he's controlling with his athletes because he was controlling with me on that phone call. Yeah. He was dictating what I should be posting, what type of content I should be doing for my show. And I said, what the fuck are you, like, what the fuck are you, you doing? Like, that's a narcissistic personality to say, this is what you need to be doing. You shouldn't be posting this shit. You should be posting this shit. Look at what this person does. Look what that channel does. You should be doing that. I was like, dude, this is not, this is not what this conversation is about. This conversation is about you reaching out to me, calling me two, three times. And then I finally said, okay, fine. I'll call you and we'll talk about this. I didn't want to even talk to him about this. Right. Uh, after right. the text message he sent me, I was like, I don't know. I'm not down for that. But I said, you know what? Whatever. Let's just talk to this guy. Went on for 30 minutes, heated phone call. And um it is what it is. At the end of the day, I I I I got my my validation on who he is and how his character is. And um that, that's how I'm I'm that's my opinion on him at this point. If right. I see if I see Fuad at a show, if I see, if he comes to the Van Pearl show, I'll go right up to him and say, Hey, what's up? I, I I'm afraid to talk to this guy. So, not at all. you know, I mean, if you, people say, well, a lot of people just keyboard warriors and they'll say shit. I'm not like that. I will talk. I will come up and talk to you. You want to have a conversation face to face? We'll have a conversation face to face. Um, th that's that's the way it's going to be. But at the end of the day, that's it. I'm not going to kind of dwell on the flawed stuff anymore. I kind of been going at it and going on him pretty hard. So I'm going to back off a little bit. He does some crazy shit. I'm going to report on it. We're going to report it on this show. And that's it. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there that I did talk to Fuad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the end result was no common ground, no agree to disagree. It was just flat out your narcissistic manipulator thinking you can control my channel. Yeah. Well, so basically what he wanted was for me to remove the video or he wanted me to edit that part out about his wife. A lot. And, and, yeah. So he wanted me to kind of make it look like he looked like his wife didn't look bad and um, do that. First off, this was a live stream. Okay. So that's why we did it. Cause people really know I didn't edit nothing in that. Um, Cause I don't play that way. And right. I'm not going to edit things. What What's the point of having a show and then just do, doing interviews or reporting on anything and then edit it to make a certain person look good and change the narrative. So right. again, he was trying to control what I did. And I flat out refused it. And I'm like, I'm saying, no, I'm not, I'm not touching that video. So, and that's where it kind of left off. He was attempting to manipulate me, right? That's what he does. And right. it didn't work. Right. So wow. He must have thought that you was a part of uh, his employees or yeah. something. So mm -hmm. that 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 leads me to believe that he is controlling Sam from doing podcasts with other outlets. Yeah, you know what? Again, at the end of the day, um, and why doesn't Samson do more podcasts? Uh, Samson used to do more when Milos was still coaching him, and yeah. I noticed right after um, what happened between the two, Samson just like kind of been off the grid, enjoying life, vacation, mm -hmm. him and the wife, and everything. Yeah. So I don't know if he just taking this downtime to. Uh, give his wife the uh her flowers now and then get back to business but i think he need to get in front of these cameras and not only just in the gym killing it but he need to get in front of these cameras because you get people forget about you really fast in this yeah. business and it's a lot of new up and coming threats yeah that's approaching we'll not talk about that could be good it's a lot of threats yeah, and you have that damn Nick Walker. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Extremely vampired out right yeah. now. He yeah, won't yeah. Let's take a look here. <laughs> yeah, so we'll move on from Fuad. Leave it at that. I know you guys are gonna be in the comments. Just to stop. Leave Fuad alone. Stop talking about Fuad. I mean, like, okay, whatever. That that's he's gonna not be a baby. Thing. He's not he's a, a big baby boy. girl. Or a yeah, like, he's a big boy. He can he can he can handle the the, yeah. the, the my impression of him. <laughs> I, I know that's another thing too. Like, come on now, it's Fuad we're talking about here. Okay. All right, let's take a look. Let's talk about the New York Pro a little bit here. We got oh. three weeks out. It's coming up fast. We we'll look at uh, Nick Walker. Let's see some updates from him. There was the back shot. It does look like he improved. 
is yeah. back. Um, the width, the thickness is wider. It's so the width is crazy. Yeah, he he he, he just has so much. He just got a lot of thickness going on. Yeah, I think it's gonna be hard to beat him. Um, and that was the one pose that I said, Tonio can um push him on. And looking at that that picture that back, I don't think so right now. Yeah, I think Tonio's. So. Yeah, I, yeah, I think Tonio. This is four weeks out for Nick. I think Tonio will look more aesthetically pleasing in that back shot. And yeah, it'll be of more turtle shell poppy, but Nick's gonna have four you have a lot of 30 pounds of muscle on him, maybe more than that. And, and the same height, right? Yeah, and conditioning. So it's gonna be hard to beat. You know, I was kind of like, can maybe maybe Tonio can beat him, maybe, but nah, you know, Nick is not when you beat. start looking at Nick, the closer he's getting. Yeah. He's already stage ready. Yeah. It's just he could pull water and fill out and go there and do damage right now. So yeah. you can just imagine how much, oh man, it's going to be him, Quentin, Antonio. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. Antonio been posting a few updates. He did a guest posing. You look big on that stage. I, I shared it to my stories. Oh, yeah, with the shorts on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe it's in his stories. I don't know. Yeah, right there. There you go. Uh, there it is. It, that, you know, it looks big, lots. man. Yeah, the lots are flaring lots there. So, I mean, unfortunately, this is not going to be enough to uh Not for me. But it looks good. He's full and round. Yeah, he always looks good though. That's yeah. the thing. He's yeah. He's always like full and round and hard. Yeah. And then we got Martin. Martin gonna have to get harder. I think he's drying out though. I think he's he's gonna dry out. I think they where was that photo that he posted? Where was that? I saw that. It was a recent movie in his stories. Um, Martin yeah. have Martin have a, a a a a beautiful physique too. His lines and everything like he has, and he's short though. He's not no yeah. really tall five, dude, five, but five, he five. comes off like a tall. He poses like he's tall. Yes, he, he poses tall, and it helps him with the flow of his body. You, you he see how he hit his. You see how he's hitting that side chest? Like oh, he's yeah. I'm see how he's <laughs> so yeah. So you can he's twisted just a little bit more, not a lot. Yeah. And it shows this. this. He he yes. He, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna I'm gonna get back there. That's why yeah. I'm gonna go see the improvements. Yeah. I'm glad that this was the first one where I look like uh, you can tell he's good. He still. Yeah. Like the bicep. Yeah. Good, complete looking bodybuilder. He has the calves. Yeah. So it's, it's, and he's young. He's can young. he beat Tonio? Can he beat Tonio? Oh, that's listen. A For Martin to beat Tonio, he has to come in dry. Drier, yeah. And full. If he come in dry and full, because they are all close in height. Yeah. And that 240 looks 260. He's only yes. 240 pounds on stage, but he looks 260. So, yeah, it, like, like look at his quad sweep. It's just, I'm not trying to be racist, but he have a black man's mm -hmm. physique. Yeah, the fullness. I said that um, when I did my Detroit yeah. recap. He's got the black man uh, muscle bellies, the roundness. Yeah, like his genetic makeup, whoever he's weird. after, he needs to go thank them. Yeah. He must have some kind of something in him, some mix of something. We don't yeah, know. Yeah, something in him. Yeah. Something. something. Because, like, let's see, this back double is Phil Heath-ish. You know what? People have been saying that, and I'm like, oh. And the only reason why I say that yeah. is look at the thickness and full muscle at the lower part of the back. Mm-hmm. It's so much still down there, and it's thick. 
Yeah. It's yeah. not shallow. Yeah. I can see what separates it. I can see some similarities to Phil. I give him three years. I yeah. Three years. Yeah. It, it's going to be all the way spot on close to it because he has everything to work. It's like we both got Honda Accords. I put rims on mine, so mine's look a little different now. Yeah. Until you yeah. get yours. Yeah. Like, and that back right there, that back right there is dangerous. Yeah, it is. He's, he's like 28 years old. So wow. if he stay focused and passionate about this sport, mm -hmm. he's going to be a top six all yeah. day. Yeah, he's all got that. Day long. He's got that com that complete physique. So, and he's got the conditioning on point. There, there's glutes done yeah. already there. Nothing much to do there. So it's like, dude, he he's definitely passionate about it. You can tell. Yeah, him. just yeah, to win this. So, this yeah. New York Pro probably be one of the best shows that we've seen so far this year. Hundred percent. It's going to be, you know, because Martin for sure going to go past uh, Beef Stew Stewart. He's 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 shooting past him. He's gonna yeah, shoot past him. You can see because there. he don't have a back. No, no. Because no, Stu ain't been doing this long enough, so he haven't developed enough. Of the, he's a big guy, no. but the actual muscles in those areas they not formed yet. It kind of like he's it got an injury on the left side. Yeah, I don't know what um, that is. Back on his screen, but just overall, he's a really big dude. You know, I um. I stepped on stage with him, competed against him. And he's a really big dude. Okay. And he's also young. So yeah. um, the difference between him and Martin, Martin is young, like around the same age, but Martin has mature muscle. Yeah, I was gonna and say because you said you said that beef's you know not mature yet and he's new in it. So was Martin though. Martin's young and mature. Yeah, now. and he has the mature muscle okay. already. Yeah. Already, like yeah. Nick Walker, mature yeah. muscle on yeah. these younger athletes reminds me of the late 90s early 2000 bodybuilders did did anyone explain why he has those things on the side of his leg is that a did he get in a car accident no scars oh man I, it's I, on his I, chest I was watching a podcast someone asked him about it and he mentioned it but it wasn't nothing significant to where it would have stuck out with to it, where it, i would it, remember for the viewers watching uh leave a comment below do you know what what these scars are on beef stew's physique because it's on his chest it's up here. It's like it's. It looks like he slid on the cement or something. But it's like there's yeah. slices though. They're not. It's, yeah, it's like tiger striped them. Like yeah, you know, yeah. It looks like he got attacked by an animal or some bear claws or some shit. He'd be a hell of a mascot for uh, Monster Energy Drink. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Like, like deep scars, but uh, yeah. So Beef Stew's in the mix, but then we got. He's doing Benton. the Vancouver. No, the he's Van doing. Bro. He's doing the New York Pro. He's gonna do the Van Pro as well. Oh, is he? Did he, did you say that? Did you hear that? They announced it on their page. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, on, oh yes, yes, I saw that in the stories. I'm working yeah. on some. I'm working on some. I don't know. I'm gonna say it because I put it out there and then someone else steals it from me. So yeah, I'm somebody gonna, gonna take it. Out. Believe it. <laughs> believe it. <laughs> you know what happened already. <laughs> Friendly people, fire. People, people stealing my shit. My guests, but uh. <laughs> um Quentin. Quentin. This is a, this is a new let's one. talk about Quentin. Quentin is, is, is this is brand he's new. a tower. Yeah. He's a tower. He has a ton of round muscle bellies. Yeah. He looks good. Like he was, he was for six two. <laughs> like he's a force to be reckoned with. Wow. Really yeah. small waist yeah. on such a big guy. Yeah. Man, I, I just, he's got the dryness. He's got the dryness in the quads, which is hard to get. And he's got so much muscle fullness and size. He's going to be in the 260s, maybe. Um, yeah. You know. I give him about 265. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he'll pull in around right there. Right under but, the 270. Yeah. Yeah. Like. He for sure gonna be fighting for the first place. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think he's gonna be sure fighting for the first place, and he can upset the whole competition mm -hmm. if he come in full because his conditioning. Any show you pull up of his, his conditioning always spot on. It's just he didn't have enough uh, fullness into the uh, lower half. 
Yes. But it, because um, and then it don't help that his calves are so big. It really draws more attention to mm -hmm. when his le his quads are not full as they should be. But I think right now, but him because he's with Matt right now, right? He's Matt Jensen, yeah. They found the formula. They did that. Yeah, they did. Matt's an awesome. They found coach. the formula. Um, Look at his hamstrings. The hamstrings need work. That's what I'm going to. I'm going to see if they are bigger. Uh, cause that's been his downfall is the narrow hamstrings from the back. Yeah, they it's they should. Mm, I I don't think they're gonna be any better than what they are right now. Yeah, because, you that's know, funny. three weeks, but they should be able to hold somebody off. I think he's gonna yeah, be fighting because he's so big. The, he's fighting for the first place. Like he's going to be two, he's 272, I think, right now. I think he's going to yeah. be in a two, six, low 260s. Tonio's 225. He's going to tower over Tonio. He's going to tower over him. He's going to tower over everyone. And, actually. and Nick Walker, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because Ronald Gordon was the guy I had him on uh, as a guest on my show. He did Detroit Pro. He got third. He's six one. I thought, dude, you're only six one. You were towering over these guys. So yeah, man, yeah. I'm I'm six one. So that's the same height as as Quinton. And Nick Walker's five six. Tonio's five seven. Beef Stew's five six. Right. Martin's yeah, five six. Like, they all around the same height. Same height. So yeah, you have they the, all around the same height. Is that going to be to his detriment because he's just so tall? So just like, well, we can't fucking compare him really. Well, really it, yeah, it can go against him because they don't yeah. have no one to compare yeah. him with. And they can also go to where he looked like a man amongst boys at the same time yeah. as well. So yeah. um, it, it, it's, it's different from if Samson because he had the conditioning that Samson don't have. So when yeah. Samson get in the middle of Hadi, and Derek, he was supposed to dominate, but he don't have the conditioning. Now, if he had the conditioning that Quentin has, yeah. he would have dominated that Olympia. You yes. know, pretty much every oh, show. Yeah. But yeah. I think Quentin, if his legs, his quads stay full and his side poses is wide and his hamstring and quads, I think he have a really good chance fighting for that first spot. Definitely, definitely. I think it's going to be. Wow, well, I'm going to do a prediction show, but I think he's going to be right there next yeah. to Nick Walker. And um, yeah, and he, if he poses like this and flares his stance wider like this, which he needs to do because he doesn't yeah. have good, he doesn't have good quads. Abductors. Yeah, yeah, he got to bring those. Uh, those are out right there in the picture. Yeah. See. <laughs> So, like he, he, his front double is the strongest pose to yeah, me. He'll beat Nick Walker in that, I think. He has a gorilla chest. Like, yeah, has, that's his. And then that side tricep is a really good one. I don't know why a side chest leg don't look like that with his side, like yeah. his side tricep. Great ab and thigh. That'll beat Nick Walker, I think. Yeah, that 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 give all of them a run for their money because yeah. his abs is flat down. They not yeah. protrude now. They're not sunk in. They, you know, but he doesn't look a little thin when because he's so tall and yeah, he doesn't fill out his frame yet. Small. Yeah, so that's the you know he may look Boy, a little he's like he's dangerous once he loses the the water and once he pulls it in. Does he start yeah. to look a little stringy next to these guys? Like a thick ass Nick Walker, probably is what's going to happen because he's so see. tall. He's so tall, right? And he's just not—he's right. not at the Samson data level. Samson's coming in Have at two ninety, two like yeah, two ninety, even two eighty nine. That's this guy's two sixty, and he's the same height. Yeah, so you think about that. Yeah, if Quentin was at least two seventy five on stage, that would yeah. make a tremendous difference. Yeah, a tremendous yeah. difference. All right, I'm going to wrap. We're gonna wrap. We'll wrap up soon because I, I want to keep it in within an hour for us. But Neckzilla, so that's the New York Pro where it's gonna be a battle. We'll come back to that. We still got three weeks. Yeah, Neckzilla, it's Rubio. I'm gonna do it. Rubio. There we go. He's got a new coach. Okay. Oh, okay. A new coach uh, that's in um, you know speaks Spanish, right? This Francisco Jose uh, is his new coach. 
sort of together now. The coach speaks Spanish. I know he's with Chris Cormier, but Chris Cormier is just kind of in his camp. He's guiding him on some decision making, yeah, posing and, and everything. Posing and yeah, so that's that's a good thing. I think that's going to be a good thing for Rubio to have some guidance now. And uh, you know, good coach. This guy also trains some other top pros um, as well. This guy, this Angel Calderon, I think his name is the two twelve guy. Oh, he two twelve. Yeah, yeah I think he's two twelve. Big ass two twelve. Yeah, he he trains this guy uh, William Martins. He did the Honor Brazil, shredded, shredded to the bone. Yeah. So this guy's same coach as now Rubio next okay. So this guy knows how to get his athletes fucking sh- dried out, shredded, which is what Rubiel needs. Rubiel's, yeah. get, Rubiel's getting ready for the Dubai Pro Show. So, so how, is, how far is that show? It's in July, same as yours. July around around that time. Okay. I think it's later in July, like July twenty. Yeah, he have enough time. Yeah, yeah, he's a freak. So um, let me go back. He was posing his legs. It's just ridiculous. His legs so big it make him look short when I know he's at least five ten. Yeah, because and this guy's good legs too, but it's just like not I'm next gotta, to Rubio. Rubio no. just nobody can stand with Tear legs drops. next to him. Just ridiculous. So I've already said I said he's going to win the Dubai Pro. I know Andrew Jack doing it, but I think he can beat Andrew. I just yeah, I, I know just, it's a a long shot, but this guy because his posing is going to be better than Andrew because he have Chris Cormier teaching him. You got Cormier. He's just a, a freak of nature, and you see it in the neck. That's why the neck is so. Th- it's just grow. Everything grows on him. It's just it got to. It's all about his mindset from this point. Yeah, he, he have all the tools. Yeah, he, if he have the right mindset. To be hungry and to go at go after it, yeah, I think he he can really do damage. Now he can be one of those athletes that has all the tools that we be talking about ten years from now. Like, man, whatever happened to him? Yeah. So it's about his mindset because some people like this have all the tools in high school and don't do nothing with them in life when they get older. You know, yeah. so it's like with this business, you see so many guys come with everything and they mindset drift off really fast and they get caught up in women stuff. And next thing you know, they lose the vision and they have fastened it. So it's a tough one. Yeah. So what a transition into this. Have you seen this yet? No nah. documentary about Phil Heath. No, I haven't um, checked it out yet. It was the reason it's... why. I haven't checked it out is because he's talking about himself. There's no one else talking about it. So it's like, if I'm talking about me, I can make, I can make the story as however I want it to be. And I wanted to like hear others have some things to say about it. They have Ronnie Coleman in there. They have Dexter in there. They have Jay Cutler in there. They have. Or Phil. Oh yeah, they're all they go into interview everyone and say and they they give their take on Phil and what they think about him and everything too. It's not just him talking about himself. It's oh, okay, because like, yeah. I was under the impression um, they, they have Steve on there talking. That, that yeah, it was just him talking about him, and I'm like, wow, why he would do it like that? So I will give it a look. Yeah, you know, Kai Green's in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're all talking about Phil, and what they thought about him, and Steve Weinberg is in there. Um, so. It, it, it's pretty deep. He goes pretty deep. He does talk about wanting to commit suicide. Um, after he finished uh, basketball, he injured his knee and was done. Right, and he was yeah. div- division one. Right, and Brandon Curry's in there. Like this is good. I think okay. it's pretty good. And, yeah, he got a good lineup. Uh, yeah, it was. The, everyone was in there, and okay. um, uh, he talks about being at his lowest point. Where at one point, um, once he pretty much got kicked off the team basketball team he went in at two in the morning he walked to some street and uh laid in the middle of the road and just said this i hope a car drives over me i hope i'm done i can't i don't want to do this Damn. yeah so you know that's people he that was the first time he's i think he's ever shared that story yeah um there's also some exclusive photos in there that 
he's never shown before where he shows the first photo he took when he started his bodybuilding career and it's just like a fucking genetic freak like no wonder he's became seven time mr olympia because the photo he took was just like he already looked like a genetic freak and he hasn't even done yeah. anything yet so yeah i, I really I highly recommend to go watch it um it's pretty pretty good right starts off a little yeah. slow but once you get deeper into it um it gives a lot of cool back back behind the scenes stuff and you know what he had to do during covid uh that's when he was coming back after his surgery on his hernia and all that stuff right Right. And then what would happen? And he's trying to make a comeback. And then the gyms are closed. So he had all this right. shit going against him. And he had to go train in the gym, you know, kind of illegally when everything was on lockdown in the dark with his iPhone right. light camera. That's all he could do because he didn't want to tip the cops off that he was in the gym training. So, yeah, it's like there's some insightful things in this. Um, yeah. He's been through some things, you know. Yeah. Like he's been through some things. I feel like Phil don't get his just due. Like he's yeah. seven times. Seven times. You know, that's not easy to come by. And and for some reason, like, while he's here in this universe, I don't think they've given him his flowers and credit like they should yeah. just overall, you know, like when you hear about a Ronnie and Jay Cutler and um, yeah. a Lee Haney, a Dorian, you know, he has seven. Seven. Consistent, though, you know, and it's like they downplay it like it's nothing. Like, yeah. it was easy. No, it wasn't easy. He killed himself for the dude that bust his ass every time to get those seven. It wasn't yeah. a cakewalk. Even yeah. when he came in and he wasn't at his 100% best, he still was 100% better than the rest that was on that stage. Yeah. You know, nothing was gifted to him. You know, because if that was the case, he would not have lost to Sean or Remy. You know? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, uh, you know, that if he didn't have that hernia surgery, he would have won number eight. Of course. Like I was sitting five rows from the stage. Yeah. The hamstring poured through that like it was just I ain't ever yeah. seen anything like it before. The uh thinness on the calves, it was yeah. just crazy. I was like, what the heck? I remember was doing a UK tour back 2019. Yeah. And um if me, Mike Rashid, uh Mark Loeb Liner. Uh, Phil Heath, there was a few of us and me and Phil, you know, breakfast time at certain times, we are always for some reason bumping into each other and we always get yeah. linked up and we, we you know, we, we we had a few meals together and then when we go to a certain gym, this certain gym where you make your appearances we link it up again and like, yeah. and we had so many talks and conversations and I remember Phil, he was telling me like, Mac like, man, if I was you, I wouldn't even Dude, this bodybuilding like mm. that no more. He like, dude, you already a brand. Like, mm -hmm. what do you have to gain? You make more not doing this. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And and then I was like, yeah, I understand. I hear him. He, you know, he 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 made a lot of sense. But at the same time, it's in me. It's not on me. So yeah. It, yeah. it was. It's not easy to just walk away with when you know you still have so much more to tell with your story. Yeah. You know, so yeah. yeah. So I oh man, Phil, like he's a great dude, you know. Yeah. It's just he got up, he get a he get a bad rep for whatever mm -hmm. reason. It's like when you at the top, people don't expect you to voice yourself or yeah. feel some type of way. It's like you gotta be Mr. Perfect. So yeah. I think they gave him that image too soon and and held him to certain standards for whatever reason. Yeah. Because this man really deserved more credit, more um, flowers, more of yeah. everything positive than what he's getting. Yeah, he he. Well, I think it's coming full circle for him now. He's on Pierce Morgan. He's doing all these tours and interviews, and he has, you know, The Rock did his documentary, Universal Studios. Yeah. Like this is big time that shit right here. So Jay yeah. Keller isn't getting that. Jay Keller's not going up Pierce Morgan, right? I mean, like that's pretty good. Yeah. So I mean, he may have been disliked a little bit when he was in his prime, but now I think he's come full circle, and everybody wants to talk to him. Everybody wants to meet him. So that's good for him. I I think he's doing well and um you know doing living the dream right now. So as a retired, no, he's definitely living a dream because yeah, you can't pay him to touch the stage. I don't no, care how much money no, he's they done. Talk. He's done. Yeah, he yeah. has nothing else to prove. No, no he don't nothing. put him. No, so well, I think we'll wrap it up, man. Uh, this is the uh, episode number one 
we're gonna do some we'll do some lives as well when, when some breaking news stuff happens uh we'll come on here and just do it live um but i'm excited for you getting ready for the van pro 11 weeks out fucking balls to the wall yeah First, be um, i'm trying to motivate you and pump you up and like push you because I really want to you to you know look good on the stage. If anything, I just want you to be like I brought my best package to this. Yeah, 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 that's the that's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. Because if I bring my best, yeah, I'm not gonna be no cakewalk. No. You know what I'm saying? No. It's not gonna be. Oh, he brought his best, put him to the corner. Nah, no. Like no. so, we no. gonna we gonna make some noise. Yeah, on camera, off camera, on stage, off stage. We're gonna make some noise awesome. you know and i look forward to coming out there yeah on your side of, yep. on the pond and just rock out and try yep. to cover as much um ground as we possibly can with us both being in the same yep. uh state and yep. and area code and all of that yep. like i look forward to that awesome can't wait man i can't wait to meet you and uh we're gonna kill it when you're here so it's gonna be fun that's uh, 11 weeks is gonna fly by so yeah all right man all right, guys. Well, uh, we'll catch you on the next one. First episode of Matt and the Mac show. We'll catch you on the next one. All right. Peace. Peace.